It is almost impossible to say exactly when prehistoric man took the first steps on the road to civilization. Our best guess is somewhere between 25 and 40,000 years ago. Therefore, discovering how he probably lived is often a difficult task. The scientists who work at it begin by looking for what he left behind. Throughout Europe, scientists have found remains of early man. In some places, they have discovered his homes and buildings. In others, they have dug up his graveyards, his pottery, his art, or his weapons. Using what they have found, they try to picture early man's life in the various stages of his development. Let us look at how they think some of the very earliest men lived. Early man had no fixed home, but took shelter in treetops to escape wild animals. He roamed in small groups over plains and forests that were inhabited by giant mammals. The only clothes he wore were the skins of animals he caught. He probably spent his whole day searching for food. It was a difficult task because early man's hunting equipment was not very efficient. He used stone for weapons and tools. This period is called the Stone Age. Scientists call each period of man's development an age, and they give it the name of the material he learned to use during that period. The earliest men would simply pick up stones and throw them at an enemy or an animal. Then he thought of tying the stones to pieces of wood to make a kind of hammer or club. He learned how to take one stone and pound it on another to give it a sharp edge. This first period is called the early Stone Age. Later, Stone Age man became very skilled at shaping stones and made chisels, axes, blades, and spear points. When one of these became dull, he would simply drop it and make another. All over Europe, scientists find the ones he discarded. These are the most important remains that early Stone Age man left behind. Let us see how he used them at times to obtain his livelihood. Early Stone Age man did not understand farming. He trapped animals for food. His first traps were probably made of pits hidden by branches. When an unwary animal stumbled into it, early man would kill it with his stone weapon. Later, he probably learned to make more complicated traps out of nets made of vines. Sometimes he might lie in ambush until a small enough animal came by. But meat was not his only food. He would pick berries and fruits as he found them. When he had exhausted the supply in any one place, he would move on to another area. However, he grew tired of roaming and began to look for better protection from the weather than the treetops gave him. As time passed, he began to make a home in caves. On the wall, he drew pictures. He probably thought these pictures had a magical power. He said to himself, when I draw a bison on my wall, there must really be one nearby, so I will make a drawing. And then if I go outside the cave, I will find a bison that I can kill. He probably thought that since the picture was captured on his wall, he would be able to capture the real animal. So he drew the best bison he could and colored it very carefully to make it look exactly like the one he wanted to catch. Some of these pictures are extraordinarily beautiful because they were done deep inside caves. They have not been destroyed or harmed by the weather, even though they have been there for thousands of years. The best ones are in a cave called Lascaux in southern France. When men started to live in caves, they also began to live in larger groups. Inside a cave, men knew they were relatively safe from the animals outside. And they could spend some of their time in new activities. Early man told stories and played on crude drums made of stretched skins. He composed tales of his bravery and hunting, which he told to impress his friends. He might also relate legends about his ancestors. Since he had no writing, he had to memorize everything. A story is easier to remember if it is in the form of a song. So these legends became the first music and poetry in the world. But songs were not all that men learned when they began to live together. Because they were more and more in each other's company, their language improved, and they could communicate their ideas and experiences. When one man learned to make a better axe, 
he could tell the others how. They could cooperate with each other to work on projects that needed more than one man. With their crude but nevertheless efficient axes, he was able to make more use of wood to build shelters and traps. He also used boats. Probably his first boats were floating tree trunks. Boats provide a good example of how early man was able to improve what he had. The picture shows two men on a log. They probably fell off rather often, so they learned to use their stone chisels to make a hollow in the trunk in which they could sit. They also discovered how they could give the round trunk a boat-like shape so it would not roll. At first they paddled with their hands and feet. Then they learned to use pieces of wood as paddles. Finally, they thought of tying a skin to a branch and holding it up as a sail. All this looks very simple to us, but still early man had made great advances since his remote ancestors had sat on the edge of a lake and tried to catch fish in his hands. The man whose ancestors had used trees for shelter now took his tools and made a boat out of the wood of trees. But the most important use he had found for wood was fire. Since earliest times, man used fire, though no one knows exactly how he learned. He probably found fire after lightning struck a tree. He picked up a burning branch and brought it back to his cave. The first use he put it to was protection. By keeping a fire in the front of his cave, he discovered that animals would be afraid to enter. After a time, he learned to start a fire by rubbing sticks together. He also discovered that cooked meat tastes better than raw. The flame fascinated him and it became one of the most important things in his life, since it helped provide his three most essential needs, safety, warmth, and food. He could now lead a more subtle existence around the community fire, and learned another skill to go with it. He made crude pottery to hold the food he cooked. Pots like these probably made a major difference in his life. Not only did they hold the food while he cooked and ate it, they also provided a means of storing it, before, he could only collect as much food as he could eat in a day. Now he could gather enough during the proper season to last him for a long while, because he had a way to store it. He no longer had to be right next to a stream to get water. He could carry a supply of it to his home instead. Now that he could store things, he had a reason to have a permanent home. Now, too, there were the opportunities to observe the factors that made his new life possible. He noticed how much he depended on fire and the seasons. He watched the skies to see when the different seasons would come. The sun, the moon, and fire were very mysterious to him, but very important. He began to develop religious ideas. Religion began when cavemen worshipped spirits of fire, the sun, and the moon. His worship took the form chiefly of prayer and sacrifices. He hoped that his prayers would make these spirits kind to him, that they would give him good weather, that the fire would not rage out of control, and other such simple ideas. An important part of his prayers was the sacrifice of animals, for early man thought that these spirits needed food, as he did, and would like gifts, as he did. In return, he expected their favors. Sometimes he built huge temples of crude stone to his gods. The one in the picture is called Stonehenge, and is in England. Not all of it is still standing, but the picture shows what it originally looked like. No one now understands how it was used or even how it was built. But the huge, heavy stones indicate the importance early man placed on his religion. The men who could build this temple had certainly come a long, long way compared to our original prehistoric man. But it was a slow development. However, after thousands of years, man advanced rapidly on the road to civilization. He had begun by living in trees and catching what food he could. Then he learned to make more and better weapons and tools. He began to live in caves and draw pictures and make up songs. He learned to cooperate with other men on bigger and better projects, such as building boats. He became more settled, moving from cave to cave less frequently. Finally, he began to appreciate religion. Now he enters what is called the New Stone Age and comes closer to leading a civilized life such as we are familiar with. One of the most important steps he took was to start raising some of his food rather than hunting for all of it. He domesticated wild animals to use as beasts of burden and for food. The first domestic animal was probably the dog. Very early, dogs had begun to live with men. They helped with the hunting and were fed in return. Now men trained them to help watch over flocks of sheep and herds of cattle. 
Thus, men could begin to live a more peaceful life than they had when they were wandering hunters. They could spend a whole season in one place while the animals grazed and grew plump. However, the first domesticated animals were not quite like the ones we know now. Eventually, they were bred to supply more than just food. Sheep especially changed. Wild sheep are covered with useless long hair, but this gave way gradually to a new kind of coat that we know today as wool. And so, from sheep, man obtained wool, and the wool was woven into cloth on crude looms. The first woolen cloth was rough and coarse, but still very warm and a good substitute for hard-to-get animal furs. Once they had warmer clothes, the Stone Age tribe did not have to fear the beginning of winter and go south every year. Man had learned to protect himself from nature. In time, he not only wove cloth for warmth, but also for appearance. He colored the wool and devised beautiful patterns. Now we have seen two important activities which were carried on at home and which encouraged man to stop his wanderings, weaving and pottery. His next discovery was the final step to leading a stable life and establishing permanent homes. Can you guess what it was? Later Stone Age man began to cultivate plants for food and medicine. After man discovered what plants made food or which ones he thought were effective as medicine, he tried to grow them himself. It was difficult to raise enough grain to feed a tribe, and only late in the Stone Age did they eventually learn how to prepare and plant a field. The first methods, as you can imagine, were very crude. Here you see one man dragging a log to break up the ground, while another scatters the seeds. At first, they were dependent on rain to make the seeds grow, but later they learned to irrigate a field by digging ditches and drawing water into them from a nearby river. They learned to make plows that moved faster and more easily. They attached oxen to them rather than a man. Thus they developed a reliable source of food from the soil, giving them a better control over their food supply. Consequently, once he controlled his food supply, man could settle in one place, and villages began. The village was usually built in the center of the fields. In the morning, men would go out and work the land. Some of the villages grew into bigger cities with walls around them. In case of serious war, the inhabitants of nearby villages would flee into the city. In peaceful times, the villages would send their extra produce to the city to be traded for furs or precious stones or any of the many articles produced by craftsmen living within the village. Many villages also owned flocks which were kept in the neighboring hills. The village itself was a center of activity where the women would weave or prepare skins, make pottery, and cook. However, it was not very long before these ancient peoples made a very important discovery. As people lived together, they needed rules. This was the beginning of government. The first leader was probably the war leader. One man would become the chieftain in war, and he would be the natural leader also in times of peace. Many communities had an assembly where they decided on their laws. In these assemblies, all the grown men of the village would meet and discuss some matter of importance to all, finally voting on it. In communities where religion was very important, the priest might become the leader. All the communities had similar problems. What land was to be sown and by whom, whether or not they should make war, where new irrigation ditches should be built, and if anyone broke the laws or did not do his share of work, the leader or the assembly would decide on his punishment. We can see that by now, early man was well organized, generally, and led a peaceful, settled life. This gave him the time and opportunity to make new discoveries and inventions, and to advance another step on the road to civilization. Can you guess what this next step would be? Gradually, man began to use metals like copper and tin. He learned to mix them. The first pieces of copper he found, he probably treated like stones. In time, he discovered that he could pound them with a hammer and force them into new shapes. He could make a very sharp edge this way. It was not, however, very useful because copper by itself is soft, and a copper edge would get dented and dulled much faster than stone. Tin is also very soft and much rarer than copper. But early man was interested in these strange substances and probably performed a variety of experiments with them. Finally, he melted them over a fire and combined them. When it cooled, he found he had a new substance, much harder than either of the metals it was made of. Thus, he discovered bronze. This age, called the Bronze Age, saw many inventions. 
When bronze is softened with heat, it can be worked into any shape. When it cools, it is very hard and durable. Instruments made of bronze were therefore much more useful than those made of stone or wood. Bronze daggers were very highly prized possessions. A bronze point on the end of a plow would make it last much longer and cut more easily. Bronze items were often traded, and by trading them, men came into contact with new things from distant places. They became richer and had more leisure and learned to lead a better way of life. Many of the things they learned or invented, such as farming methods, for instance, have changed very little until recent times. But now man was ready not only to make new discoveries, but to improve on old ones. The most important was the wheel, for with it man could do much more work. The earliest wheel was probably a log. Then a slice of a tree trunk was used, as shown in the picture. Later they learned to carve out most of the center, leaving only spokes for support to make the wheel lighter. With the wheel came carts and wagons. Before this, it was impossible to move large quantities of anything. Wheat had to be carried in from the field, bundle by bundle. Builders had to carry the bricks up to a building a few at a time. This was, of course, very slow and stopped men from getting more work done. Now, large supplies of grain and materials could be moved further, faster, and by fewer men. The great number of ways that the wheel saved labor is hard to imagine, and not all of them had to do only with carrying and moving. For example, he no longer had to mold clay by hand alone, but used the potter's wheel. The potter's wheel simply rotates the clay, leaving the hands free to shape it. The one you see in the picture is really a very crude form of potter's wheel, which very quickly gave way to more efficient ones. This wheel allowed him to make pots much faster. It also helped him make them much more smoothly and symmetrical. As a result, people soon had an abundance of pots for every purpose instead of having to carefully preserve the ones they had. And the making of beautiful pots and painting them skillfully became an art in itself. These pots and vases are some of the most important and treasured remains of the dawn of civilization. Let us think now about the contributions of these early men to our present civilization. Can you remember them? I will read you a list of seven important firsts in the growth of civilization. Six of them are correct. One is not. See if you can pick out the one which is not. Ready? One, the first fire, tools, and weapons. Two, the first work with wood, clay, stone, leather, and metal. Three, the first carts and boats. Four, the first writing. Five, the first artists, musicians, and storytellers. Six, the first beginnings of religion. Seven, the first communities and governments. Did you find the wrong one? Now let's look at a list of the six that are right. Contributions of early man. One, first fire, tools, weapons. Two, first work in wood, clay, stone, leather, metal. Three, first carts and boats. Four, first artists, musicians, storytellers. Five, beginnings of religion. Six, first communities and governments. The wrong one I read you was the first writing. Writing came much later and was a contribution of the civilizations of Egypt and Mesopotamia, which you will soon learn about. But from the six contributions of early men listed here, we can see how much of our very modern civilization is really very, very old. Thank you.